Hello everyone, this is Connor. A little while ago, I decided that I wanted to uh, improve at the game Stardew Valley. Now, for those of you familiar with Stardew Valley, you might know that it is generally quite a laid-back, relaxing uh, farming game. You can kind of take as long as you want to do things. There's very little penalty or punishment in the game. But there is also a community of people optimizing the game, speedrunning it, focusing on earning as much money as possible, as quickly as possible, things like that. And I wanted to uh, develop some of the skills to kind of keep up with these people. Because there are things like animation canceling or uh, other optimization tactics that I felt like I would need to practice to be better at them before I did any sort of actual competitive running. Um, not necessarily speed runs, but just other potential challenge runs and that sort of thing. So I decided to just set some goals for myself and to see if I could have a perfect spring. Now what a perfect spring meant for me, uh, and this is all played on 1.5, so it's a little outdated now, but I personally consider this kind of my swan song to 1.5. Uh, much of what I accomplished in this run using RNG manipulation and um, other factors that have changed since then would no longer be possible. But I had some goals that I set for myself in spring. So those goals were to fully pay off the vault room, the community center, so I could take the bus to the desert. I wanted to get two lucky rings, a very rare, very powerful ring option. I wanted to have a high enough combat level to unlock explosive ammo for my slingshot. I wanted to be able to plant on summer first a full star fruit planting um, on the entire beach farm uh, sprinkler plot. And I also wanted to be able to speed grow it, which allows you to get, I think, three uh, star fruit harvests in one summer. I wanted to have 200 oak trees planted for the purpose of making future kegs. I wanted 10 crystallariums, the galaxy hammer, five coops and a barn, because this is played on the beach farm, and so farming options uh, for crops are pretty limited. I wanted to instead focus on animal products. I wanted an Iridium pick and axe fully upgraded. I wanted to catch the legend, and I wanted to pay for Krobus's star drop, which also means making enough museum donations to unlock the sewer key. Now that might sound like a lot, uh, but for those of you who haven't seen like Stardew Optimal play before, it is certainly very much possible. So jumping right into the run, things start off pretty quick here, I'll try and keep up, but in the first few days my main goals are making money so that I can pay for a copper pick and silo tomorrow. Now how will I get all the copper to have those bars? Well I'll show you. But on the first few days, uh, I buy some salads to stock up on extra money, do extensive clay farming both on the farm and the beach, sell that clay to Robin, buy and throw a copper ore from Clint, which means that he'll bring me the furnace recipe tomorrow. And I also begin giving uh, gifts to Carolyn, these daffodils. And from speaking with uh, Pierre, I buy the other from the spring bundle seeds. Uh, the spring bundle seeds, pardon. I want to make sure to plant those and some extra potatoes as well. Pass out on the first day, and I upgrade to level one foraging. This will, the next day, allow me to uh, get acorns from trees and also knock them out of the ground. But in the morning of the second day, I just sort of run around, clearing some space on my farm, uh, not at random, but rather to... Oh, and there uh, you might have seen something occur, which, yes, 100% means that I had to take this day, could not replay it, so this day had to go perfectly, because I got the living hat drop just naturally on one of my runs of day two. Uh, but I have gathered four geodes. When I crack these open, you'll see 20 copper followed by 20. This is a seeded run, uh, and I found a seed that had this absurd early copper distribution, which allows me to actually cook up enough bars. Uh, the other issue in addition to um, getting the copper is just getting the funds and at least in 1.5 the best way to make money early was still going to be clay farming. You see here I am finishing up my fifth bar smelt and I have just enough money from selling uh, various clay and other items and then I have a little bit of time uh, to get my next five bars cooked before I actually have to pay for uh, the silo with Robin. You see, you can actually shop with her when she walks back into her home on Tuesday. So I was able to purchase this silo Tuesday night. And you might wonder why I'm rushing a silo so badly. Uh, the actual idea is that there's only so much Robin time available in spring. And so if I want to construct everything I have in mind, all those various coops, I need to optimize how often Robin is building something, um, including starting buildings as early as possible. But, you see, these gathering these uh, foraging items, getting the pick and the uh, silo started were my main goals for the first couple days. 
Um, but other than that, I've also kind of set up my foundation to head into day three. And I got a little bit of mining experience from breaking uh, rocks that had coal and geo drops. Now, throughout the whole course of the run, you'll see me chopping specific trees, uh, breaking them down, because I'm chopping the trees that yield two acorns. And that is predictable, or at least was in, in 1.5. Um, so I was always able to know which trees I could chop down to multiply the number of acorns I had access to. After a full day of clay farming on day three, I got a tremendous payout, um, which will enable my activities heading in to day four. You can see sort of every item that I've gathered here, uh, the, the limited things available to me, it's still kind of scraping together at the start of the run. So it's important that every single moment be optimized. And also, I, I do want to say, um, I recorded footage from several days, uh, several attempts of each day of playthrough, I should say. So it might have taken me multiple attempts to actually get everything done in one day that I wanted, both because of um, my actual play skill and also because of random factors. So that there is an element of uh, maybe I've cut together footage from multiple days, so if something doesn't make sense or you see like a number jump down and then back up, that's probably why I assure you all of this was completed legitimately. Um, and now here on the fourth, I am starting my first coop. A little bit earlier than I think many people will be, but now that the silo is done, uh, I can put Robin back on task. Um, and I spend the rest of day four just gathering other foraging experience, um, items from around the valley. You can see I'm like fully exhausted at this point, but still uh, out chopping everything I can. Can't pick up uh, this daffodil because I already had two lower tier ones. But yeah, th these early days, really optimizing every moment is critically important. Uh, because it's kind of a snowball effect, right? The more you can get done early, the faster you can ramp up. Um, and finally, of course, now that I already have a silo on the fourth, uh, I can scythe up all of this grain uh, and actually have some hay to feed my chickens when they show up shortly. But I think, yeah, as this day draws to a close, we can get into day five, where I get my cat delivered, my parsnips are done, and also it is the first mines day, but it's also uh, the first day that I have to focus on one of my other sort of mini goals. My mini goal was to complete the boiler room on the 6th. The 6th is the earliest possible day you can complete any room in uh, the community center because you have to read that Junimo text, which I just flashed on screen for a second, and the community center doesn't open until the 5th. And then you have to talk to the wizard, and the next day um, he will... Or sorry, you have to read the text, the next day you'll get a letter from the wizard, and then you have to go speak to him. And only then can you even understand Junimo's script. So, the way that I actually made it deep down into the mines, and this is something that I'm doing throughout the whole course of the run, is using Blade's predictor. Um, for those of you familiar with Stardew Optimization, you probably are already familiar with Blade and his predictive tools. Um, basically through looking at your seed and your save file and the layout of the floor, it, it's possible to 100% predict where ladders are going to be. And so anytime that you see me running around in the mines, uh, it's likely that I've already know, like, right, I knew that rock was going to be a ladder. It's likely I already know the location of, oh, and this is my whole first day's haul. You see, I had a very successful mines run. I even managed to get an ancient seed, which is nice, and down to floor 65. So I pushed pretty darn deep just for the first day. Um, but using Blades Predictor, I'm able to predict where things like geodes are going to spawn, uh, which rocks are going to drop geodes or coal, um, or even ores. And so I'm able to very judiciously pick which rocks to even break at all. But here on the 6th, you see that I am, in general, trying to gather diamonds. Uh, gem rocks and geodes is one of the main money makers that I use in this run, at least until the, the Skull Caverns are available. So on this day, the 6th, I need to get all the way down into the 80s of the floors in order to complete the boiler room. Because that's going to take getting fire quartz, which isn't really accessible uh, any other way. But I actually did manage to succeed it. And you see I have a fire quartz here in my inventory by about 1 p.m. Um, combined good luck on both the 5th and the 6th. Um, and then just, you know, pushing down as deep as I could um, on the 5th, the getting as many floors deep down in the mine uh, enabled all of this progress then the, the, this whole run has these very careful elements of money management. You can see when I'm, you know, buying a coffee to better sprint around the map, um, or when I'm like buying just a few salads or paying for just one tool upgrade, I usually am riding that line of having zero dollars, because if there's any way to make more uh, money from spending my money, I'm going to take it. But here on the 6th still, see it's 340 and I just bought the backpack upgrade. Um, with my remaining money, I'm going to buy up as many potatoes as I can afford, 41 more seeds, 
Um, and reminder, this is still the, the sixth of spring. <laughs> so compared to a more traditional leisurely uh, pace of play, this might seem kind of absurd, but I went ahead and spoke to the wizard and because I got that copper ax already upgraded, I can harvest hardwood and that will allow me to complete the construction bundle. One of the requirements for unlocking the boiler room is having two uh, other bundles completed. So I'm gonna do that with spring forage and also with construction. Um, those are the only ones that I could really route out a way to get done early. But you can see basically my whole uh, contents of my inventory there, everything I managed to accumulate so far. Um, here's me pre-preparing some, some spots on my farm for me to put all the potatoes in, and then heading my way up. Uh, all the routing of the, the, the run initially as I make my way around the map, where I go when, is all carefully considered to maximize value uh, in the time that I'm spending walking. So here you see I can get both my horseradish and my leek because there happen to be forage up here. Um, and that's the kind of thing that I would plan out ahead of time and very carefully um, have routed into how I would spend that day. But yeah, that there's two bundles completed, um, both the spring forage and the construction. And then I animation canceled my way over to the boiler room and was able to complete all three of the bundles in here. So I will have the minecarts complete on the morning of the seventh. Um, I think this is one of my kind of happier accomplishments. Obviously it's still so early into the run, but I think, you know, this is literally the first day that this is possible. And on top of everything else I've accomplished, uh, it's just kind of feels very nice um, to see that my run actually was feeling pretty optimal and fast. So yeah, there's minecarts finished. I also have some skill level ups here. I'll generally try and show off when those happen. And you'll notice as I pick these potatoes, they're all dropping two or three potatoes. That is also predictable, or at least it was in 1.5. You could see what spots would drop a double uh, of a uh, crop harvested on that day. So I was basically able to double how many potatoes I had to sell, make a little extra money here at Pierre. Um, and then back down into the mines. You can see mining gemstones is one of the main ways that I would make my funds. Uh, you can reload um, these uh, like 45, 55, 65, 75 floors. And whenever you visit them, there is a chance for gem nodes to be there, uh, even though, oh, and this is just cool tech, uh, moving an item at Robins to smooth back out any ground that I'd hoed up uh, either for planting um, or for um, clay farming. But yeah, I started a new coop while I was at Robbins, um, and what I was saying about the mines, like man, this, this pace of play is quick. Um, what I was saying about the mines is that because gem nodes can spawn on those floors and you can use the elevator to reload them over and over, it's a good way to get lots of money, which is what you need to pay for the uh, iron pick that I just put in there. And then I, uh, or sorry, iron axe, I think. And then I make my way down uh, to purchase a couple of chickens today and then back out to water uh, my crops on the farm. Because I just did my big potato harvest, I'm going to level up my farming tomorrow and be able to make sprinklers, but I'm still back into the mines making sure to get a little bit of last uh, money and resources and levels and experience and all that. But level four mining unlocked as well as level two farming so I can make sprinklers. And that's going to save me a lot of trouble in the future. I've also made enough money that now Demetrius comes out uh, to let me know about my uh, the farm cave. I did choose uh, Fruit Cave, so, you know, generally speaking, it takes less maintenance. One of the things you'll see me doing through lots of these early days is killing dust sprites, and also I'm, I'm harvesting these rocks that I know will drop geodes using the predictor like I described, just reloading this floor over and over and then only breaking the rocks that I know will drop geodes. Um, but you'll see me killing dust sprites throughout the whole course of the run, and that's to get the burglar ring. For those of you familiar, you know, the burglar ring uh, doubles uh, monster drops and is one of like the most powerful ring slot items, so that was a main focus of mine. And this is also just... I put this in here to show off kind of the level of like attention to detail the run took. I was constantly pausing to take a screenshot, zooming in, looking around, trying to figure out exactly where things are on the map so that every step could be optimized. And here we already have a miner unlocked on the 8th, a little bit more money from selling up the various things I got in the mines. And then for the 9th, it's time back to the mines to train up some combat. Um, I'm also going to make a, a run over to Clint's later today, but first I need to get some resources to make sprinklers. Now that I uh, crafted some of them, 
I also make my way down to floor 100 and, and get the star drop, you know, while I'm here. No big deal. Uh, and the star drop actually fully refills energy, so that was very convenient. Now that I have the steel axe, I'm also going to break open my geodes here. I, I don't think that I showed it off with much detail previously, but every time that I break open geodes, uh, I'm using the geode predictor, which was also possible in 1.5, uh, to carefully break the geodes open in whatever order will yield the most money. So you see, now I'm like kind of rich, actually. Uh, selling the contents of all those geodes. I do then make my way over to the secret woods because I have a steel axe already, uh, or an iron axe, whatever it's called. Um, and so I'm able to harvest this, which is really good for foraging experience. Um, getting foraging experience quickly is kind of a struggle, and having a high foraging is important for this run so I can get tree fertilizer. Um, but I also expand my farming area, uh, plant all these little bonus parsnips that I had, uh, anything that I can get planted. And I'm actually like working on the fields while I'm smelting ores to make the sprinklers to then water those fields. Like I'm really trying to overlap as many things as possible just to maximize efficiency. Um, but aside from this final parsnip plant, the, the day that I'm planting is very intentionally chosen because I want to make sure to have uh, all of these harvested and up in time for me to put down strawberries, which is going to be the, the main crop that I grow here through spring. Um, just through the course of this run, I oh yeah, almost made it into the cabin here. I have all the cabins on the farm because I, I set myself up as like a four-player farm even though it's just me playing, just so that I would have extra places to potentially go to sleep. Um, but uh, the 10th is once again a foraging day. So like I said, I, I'm really trying to prioritize getting high foraging early in order to uh, be able to make tree fertilizer. And I visited Robin on the way to move those cabins into slightly more optimal spots. I also have the resources uh, to make a big coop. The, the 10,000 G for that is expensive, but upgrading one of my coops and getting some of those functions automated is going to be a big difference maker. So yeah, I'm just making my way throughout the, the whole uh, community, chopping down trees, picking up foraging, um, just trying to get as much foraging experience as possible. And you can see my, my whole inventory there is full of stuff, and it does pay off. Um, chopping trees yields a surprising amount of experience if you do that much of it. So now that my steel pickaxe is ready here on the 11th, um, I'm going to pick up the mine, I'm going to pick up the pick, pardon, and then it's just back to the mines uh, for more combat, more resource gathering, more geode gathering. And see, I'm still prioritizing dust sprites as much as possible. Those are definitely my uh, number one. And I was actually even killing those prior to getting my pick back, because now that I have the mine carts, I can travel between Clint's and the mines pretty quickly. Um, this is, you know, another great example of that snowball effect I was talking about, where once you have um, the minecarts unlocked, suddenly traveling around the map is so much faster, you have more time in every day. Um, pay a quick visit to the Adventurer's Guild just to, to sell off um, some of the items that can be difficult to sell otherwise. And yeah, a lot of today was just spend geode farming. I mean, you can see the effects right now where I break, you know, one rock and get a geode out of it. And just knowing that rock on that floor is always going to drop a geode on this day, that allows you to be really optimal in how you're spending your energy and time. So another big sell here, um, heading into the 12th, because the 12th is gonna be uh, the day that I start a new coop. So I needed to make sure to have some extra money in reserve. Um, and also, you know, money in general is important. Um, just each day I, I'm burning through more salads, more coffee, more costs of buying seeds. Um, getting this treadmill running as quickly as possible is gonna be a big help. But yeah, here's my chickens grown up and laying eggs. It's very exciting times. So, the reason that I did this was to practice my skills about using the predictor, about animation canceling, and then shortly thereafter 1.6 came out. Um, and not to say invalidated those skills, but certainly changed them. You know, as I understand it, the, um, the process of running this game, playing it optimally, is fundamentally different now. Uh, and I, I wanted to capture this on film, my first prismatic shard, uh, promptly thereafter being sold. Uh, 2000G is just too much to, to pass up at this point. Um, but yeah, obviously at this point I have, you know, almost $34,000, so, so buying a coop is no problem. Um, but I want to make sure to have some extra money laying around heading into tomorrow, because tomorrow is the day of the festival. Um, but yeah, I, I was practicing all of these skills, trying to improve at Stardew, um, and also just enjoying uh, recording and making this run for my own sake. Um, but now that the game's changed so much, I actually have not fully explored 1.6, and I'm pretty excited to dig into it um, and see what options still remain for optimal play or what it looks like. 
Um, still, I'm sure lots of pause buffering. That's one thing that I've mostly saved you from in editing. But as I make my way around, you know, you can save minutes here and there if you just uh, pause every time you're thinking or every time you need to switch what item you have equipped. Lots of level ups that day as we head into... Um, oh, and, and you can see here I'm actually harvesting everything and finishing up uh, getting these, these planting squares ready. Because not only am I going to go to the festival today and, and buy some strawberries, I also uh, will be able to turn in the cauliflower today, which is the last of the spring crops that I hadn't been able to get. And completing that rewards you with speed grow fertilizer, which if used on strawberries will give you an extra harvest from them. Um, fun fact. A good way to start off spring efficiently. So yeah, you see I planted a ton of seeds there. Those are all the ones that I gathered from chopping those double acorn trees and uh, knocking them up out of the ground, as I mentioned. Also got my first harvest of the fruit bat cave. Nothing wild yet. Um, and I used basically all of my energy prior to heading to the festival. You see the, the festival ends at 2 p.m. if you don't make it. So I ran through it at 1.40, um, just barely got there in time. Bought 127 strawberries. Not like a massive amount. I certainly could have bought more. But the, the beach farm, you're so limited on how much sprinkler space you can have. Um, and from there, it's just a matter of uh, other upgrades around my farm today. Making sure to get that speed grow, make it back in time. Uh, to have my strawberries planted and watered today. Um, and, and every time that I go by the community center at this point, I'm taking over whatever extra items I can. So roughly halfway through spring here, um, and obviously a lot has already been accomplished. You can see like now I'm sitting on nearly $23,000 even having a big uh, purchase today. But the speed at which things go is gonna ramp up pretty considerably soon. Uh, Cause now that we have these foundational things in place, um, we're almost to the burglar ring, um, and then shortly thereafter it'll be time to head out into the Skull Caverns. Um, today's is uh, Haley's birthday, so I made sure to give her a, a daffodil on my way to give Caroline one. The reason I'm gifting Caroline with such a focus is tea saplings. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar, tea saplings are an item that you unlock through her friendship line, um, and they used to be a really good money maker. I think they got nerfed substantially, but um, headed to bed with a, a combat level up. And the next day, I'm able to reposition my scarecrows because my field wasn't quite fully covered. Um, and then the 15th is the day to repair the bus um, and get the burglar ring. Um, so those are sort of two major goals that I've been making incremental progress towards. And today I wanted to kill enough dust sprites uh, to unlock the ring, to complete that monster hunter goal, and also to get enough geodes uh, that I could then take them to Clint and, and through that process make enough money to fully pay off the bus, which I think is like 52,000, is the number that I have on the top of my head. Um, so it's a considerable amount of money, right? Especially to have on the, the 15th of spring, year one, but here we go. And I know that for those of you with familiarity with uh, optimal Stardew play, you'll know that uh, this amount of money this early is actually not anything too impressive. Um, people have gotten way more money way faster, but because I'm playing on the beach farm and because I have all these other goals as well, I, I like to think that this run kind of exists on a different axis than just like a max money run. Um, I have a, a larger mix of goals, not just making money. Uh, but yeah, with, sorry, it's 42,000. 42,000 uh, at nearly 6 p.m. I fully upgrade uh, the vault and can now make my way out to the desert. And I actually uh, will be doing that on the 16th, but we'll get to that in a minute. So um, first I need to go and make sure that I actually get the burglar's ring, which is just a, a ton of dust sprite killing, just reloading these floors over and over until I have uh, good distributions of sprites. And I'm always still picking up diamonds, you know, clearing out. Um, oh, and this is just heartbreaking. You hate to see it. <laughs> but that did happen a few times where I would day out at like a, a really unfortunate moment, but you know, you, you take what you can. So, unfortunately, I'm not able to go straight to the desert even though the bus is repaired because I need to wait for Pam to make her slow way out to the bus. So first I had a little bit of extra time in the mines. But this time is actually important because I have not yet gotten the skull key. Whenever you get the skull key, it doubles the HP of all the mobs in the mines. And since I've been killing dust sprites, I didn't want them to be any stronger. Uh, so I, I waited to get it until today, waiting for Pam to walk her way out. And I also, you know, just keeping up uh, with my constant practice, I built a new coop today. Uh, literally any time that Caroline finishes building something, the next day I'm going out. Oh, and there's a lucky ring. 
what a coincidence on my first day in the desert I get a lucky ring. So this is one of the more absurd things I did. Using the predictor, you can see which crate spots on which floors will drop what item on what day. So I just made a little chart for myself of every floor on floor level one that would drop a lucky ring from which crate. And I just replayed this day over and over and over, reloading that first floor over and over and over until I actually got two lucky rings. And so it, it did take considerable real world hours, but it only took like, you know, a morning in game. Um, and then I could spend the rest of the day just reloading the first floor, um, harvesting any gem nodes or, or other resources that I found. Occasionally, like here you see I'm on floor number two, just uh, any time that I had like an easy access to a ladder, I might descend. Um, but by and large, I'm just replaying these first few floors of the Skull Caverns, harvesting their resources, and if I don't see anything good, I can just immediately reload it um, while also smelting some things uh, in that lobby room, which you probably saw. So yeah, on the 16th, um, I think this is pretty good progress so far, honestly. Trading my rubies and diamonds uh, with the desert trader to get um, the spicy eels and the, the triple shot expressos. Really important items for, for efficient play, at least in 1.5. Um, and I already have level 9 mining and level 6 combat. Making good progress there. Now the 17th uh, is a day when I actually won't be uh, delving into the mines, even though they are available to me because I also have a goal to catch the legend. I don't know if you forgot that, but I will need to have 10 fishing, uh, either through boosts or normally, um, and be able to catch the legend in the next like 11 days. So I needed to spend considerable time today fishing. Um, I made a map of where bubbles would appear, and you can see all these catches are happening in bubbles. As many of them as possible, perfect. I'm not like incredible at the fishing game, honestly, but I'm doing my best. Um, and pretty early on in the day, I was able to upgrade to uh, the fiberglass rod, um, which then uh, allows me to use bait and speed up my catch rate even further. Although bubbles honestly do a lot. Uh, bubbles were a, a big difference maker in this run. Now I think, if I recall correctly, it actually did take me until today to get the burglar's ring. Um, so yeah, yeah, here's me picking it up. So I tried to get it um, earlier on, but just killing that many dust sprays decided to prioritize other goals. But here I am, picking up my burglar's ring on the 17th. Now, whenever I'm in the Skull Caverns, I can actually uh, you know, profitably kill um, the various enemies there to get things like batteries dropping from Iridium Bats, or even just all the cool things that drop from the Serpents. Um, but now, I can spend the afternoon doing some of those same practices in the Skull Cavern. Now that I've already gotten some fishing experience today. And you can see what I meant that like the days do speed up a little bit, where today I was already working through several fishing spots and now I'm like bombing my way with ring swapping down deep into the Skull Caverns. One of the big things that I took away from this run, uh, having played through it, is that the most efficient way to play Stardew Valley, broadly speaking, is very planned and very, uh, I guess nested is a good word for it, where each activity naturally dovetails into the next, where you're already at the location you need to be at to do whatever your next goal is. So today is another day that I'm going to be delving in the Skull Caverns. It's just too good of a moneymaker uh, to pass up. And the way that I'm going to um, spend my morning is, as you saw, gathering uh, some acorns, filling those back up, um, I think I put in my axe to be upgraded to, to gold just then, um, and then I can, uh, having sped up Pam as she was leaving her home, uh, already find her at the bus stop. Um, but then, you know, by uh, mid, I guess this is still the morning, but by the afternoon I wanted to have found myself a third prismatic shard. Because once you have three prismatic shards, on Thursdays you can trade for a lucky rock candy. Um, and those are such a huge difference maker in the amount of resources that I at least can pull out of Skull Cavern. They make a big difference for everyone, but um, I'm not quite as good as many of the, the very serious hardcore players with like the explosive ammo and the bombing strategies and um, various other ways to make the caverns more efficient. So I was really glad to get a bunch of practice uh, in my playing of this run. And you can see already that even just on, on floor 90 here, um, I'm getting some pretty good resources, you know, fighting powerful enemies with powerful drops. Um, I tried to kill as many of these bats as possible to get the batteries that I would need um, for my Crystallarium goal. <laughs> it's always got to be thinking about all the goals. You don't really have that many days. Um, 
But now that I uh, am this deep, I'm seeing a lot of these Iridium nodes. And there you see one of them did drop my third Prismatic. And I'm able to, at about 1 a.m., uh, make my way back out to the trader and trade for the uh, rock candy. But I also then um, picked up my furnaces. I'm not going to be doing that reload the first floor strategy anymore. And so I wanted to bring my furnaces back home. And it is level 10 mining already accomplished and level 7 combat pretty close um, to my explosive ammo goal. So now I set up my smithing facilities at home. It's time to start smelting some iridium, and I am immediately able to make my way out of the mines. I took the um, the rock candy at around 2 p.m., so it lasts all the way through uh, the deeper floors rather than using it earlier. Um, I think that is generally considered the, the better practice is to use it as late in the day as you can to still get the full effect. Um, but pushing my way down uh, further into the floors and the depths of the Skull Caverns is where you get just lots of rare and valuable items. It's kind of hard to beat this. My crops at home are still growing. I'm still accruing value that way. Um, but by uh, delving down, I was even able to get an auto petter, um, you know, pretty valuable item to pick up. And then shortly there also, uh, thereafter, an auto grabber as well. Um, and, and this is an example of just kind of the absurd um, effects that you can get from the burglar ring killing a bunch of monsters. Just watch like the amount of ore that I get out of this and the other things they're dropping um, just for killing these bats, which I already need to get the combat experience from. Um, I think that the, the burglar ring power cannot be overstated, even for casual players. But then uh, in the late evening, I made sure to come back instead of passing out, uh, even though I have no money, just so I can start another Iridium smelt. Because once I had 10 mining, I was able to increase the value of my bars for selling. And selling Iridium bars is one of the main money makers that I was able to accomplish in spring. Because uh, again, I'm, I'm on the beach farm. I can't really use farming, um, not crops at least. Uh, and my first egg hatch today, also very sweet. So. Really, I'm uh, building my community as well as my own wealth. So there is explosive ammo unlocked uh, on the, the night of the 19th, already making progress towards another goal. And then I'm able to soup up this coop with these natural tools. Now, I spent the morning uh, on the 20th just doing some assorted chores, um, cleaning up this home, putting crystallariums in it, um, you see, you know, starting a new iridium smell, picking up the fruits from the bat cave. There's all these kind of assorted farm chores that I tried to batch together whenever I could. Um, and I made my way down here to repair the beach um, bridge so I could loot various forage off of it as well. Uh, I had a bunch of items to donate to the museum. And I think, uh, if I recall correctly, I actually, yeah, I was able to pick up my gold axe, sell all those bars of iridium, and, and now I'm well past 60k. So you can see we are getting to the point where any time I can to spend money to save money, or to save time, I should. And that's what I immediately went and did at Robin, purchasing a ton of stone and wood resources that are going to help me build crystallariums, um, also upgrade my coop all the way up to the deluxe coop, I think it's called, the third level. Um, and also to make uh, 20 preserve jars. So I'll be able to uh, jar some of these strawberries, the first harvest of which is ready today. Then I cleared out this cabin, um, put my jars in there, and started those initial strawberries. Um, and you can see I have like a, a healthy farm running here, even though I'm spending most of my time not on traditional farming tasks. Still don't have tree fertilizer, so the acorns aren't yet looking great, but I do have quite a bit there. Um, I purchased a duck, you know, another sort of assorted chore, and then made my way around working on foraging a little bit more. I'm reading through my notes here, and it is just, today is, is like three times as long of notes as any other day, so you can see the, the wide variety of chores that I had to get done. Um, this whole run was kind of meticulously planned. I, I knew what my goals were from the start, and then day by day I would just look at, you know, what resources do I have access to, what's available today, what can I actually do? Um, and made the kind of big decision to start a pickaxe upgrade, which means no skull caverns at least for a little while but uh, there are plenty of other important tasks for me to take care of at home. Uh, I bought the backpack upgrade now that I have a ton of money um, and also stocked up on salads and bought a beer 
uh, for Shane because today is Shane's birthday. <laughs> so I was able to drop that off at him, getting a little bit of friendship. Obviously it's not my main focus right now, but birthday gifts are just too powerful to pass up. And uh, once again, back to, to fishing in bubbles, as many perfect catches as I can. Picking up these little kind of incremental bits of fishing, even if I'm not spending all day on it, is really gonna make it easier for me to get the levels I need to catch the legend. Because uh, the legend requires 10. You won't even see the legend if you have less than 10 fishing, so. Um, that is, is one goal that I had in the back of my mind this whole time. And I think this is the last time that I make you look, watch through all of my uh, fishing ventures, but um, now that I'm friends with Clint, I get drunk with him and then go and chop some trees out in the forest. <laughs> and then a little bit more fishing from that same pier. And you can see uh, I have another full smelt of Iridium, and I'm just basically selling all the fish I got I don't need for the community center. Um, obviously, fishing is not my primary money maker here. So you can also uh, see some of that stone being put to use immediately with crystallariums. And just like that, I have seven foraging. I can now make tree fertilizer. But tree fertilizer uh, primarily requires a lot of fiber. Um, the other resources are um, easy to get, I forget what the other ingredient is, but fiber is kind of challenging to get, or at least it was in 1.5. And so you'll see me fiber farming off and on, um, always around like level 80 of the mines, um, just making my way in and um, slicing up as much of the fiber as I can, because I have a constant need for tree fertilizer. <laughs> Another round of community center donations here passes pretty quickly. Um, and then I think there is uh, one more plant that I can do to fit in within the season, trying to get as high of a farming level as possible. So I think in a, in a minute here I'll be going to purchase some kale. Um, kale is really good for... Oh, and I also got the tea sapling recipe, so that'll be a little money maker to focus on for the rest of the run. Um, kale is really good experience per spot. So it's one of the best crops to plant in spring whenever you're primarily focused on leveling up your farming skill, which I needed to do to get access to uh, deluxe sprinklers, the, the second tier. Um, which actually, fun fact, the third tier of sprinkler is significantly less uh, additionally effective than you might expect. Um, if you actually look up the math on it, it's pretty fascinating how, because the sprinkler still takes up a space and, and uh, how exactly it cuts in, it's like nowhere near as effective as moving from the level 1 to level 2 sprinkler. More fishing that evening leveled me up to level 5, so I can get a little uh, extra money whenever I do sell my fish. And you can see that I hoed out the remaining spots uh, in my field, because shortly I will have the farming level to upgrade this field. Uh, placing down the deluxe sprinklers and moving the little level one sprinklers onto the edges of the field so they're able to fertilize some of these off spots. Or not fertilize, I guess, water. Um, but yeah, this, this run, as you can see, is really moving at a breakneck pace. I tried to edit together uh, clips to save you as much time as possible and shorten this, but there is just, when you are playing efficiently, a lot that gets done in one day. Now that I have level 6 farming, it's easy enough to go ahead and build quality sprinklers. I already have been gathering those resources and place those around the farming plot, including replacing the regular sprinklers around those odd spots on the outside. Um, but I only have six days left, so it's time to get moving, I guess. Well, I guess seven, counting the, the 22nd. But I go back to Clint, um, pick up my golden pick, and then start cracking open geodes. This time, not to make money, this time working towards my goal of getting the Krobus star drop. So that requires getting the sewer key, which I think takes 60 museum donations, something like that. So I just ran some trips back and forth to Clint's, um, donating at least one of, of ever, one of every gem uh, that I was able to get, and sold some iridium bars, making my way to just enough money to put in my iridium axe. Uh, so he'll be holding that axe for a couple of days, which, you know, there's plenty else for me to get done uh, since I've already leveled up foraging pretty well. So I'm heading back to the farm, selling off my remaining gemstones. There's really nothing else uh, to do with them. And now it's time to look into some other money makers available to me. Um, some more tea saplings, um, restocking uh, iridium ore that I had available in my furnaces, and then using the money that I had, I'm going to build, I believe this is when I build the barn. Yep. So I place one barn on the farm, uh, not for money purposes primarily, but just to get those community center items. And then uh, in the early afternoon, it's back out to the mines. I have to gather a ton of fiber, primarily for making tea saplings um, and also tree fertilizer. Fiber is just an extremely valuable, extremely limited resource at 1.5. I'm not sure if it's changed in 1.6. I think there is something new with fiber. Anyway, so making my way back home, 
um, continuing to keep the furnaces running, continuing to place tree fertilizer made with that new fiber that I've acquired. And as always, I am playing out every single day. <laughs> you see it here, I'm filling my kegs at 1.50 a.m. Or my, my jars, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, th this really using every moment of every day is uh, one small optimization uh, that any player can pick up. So another small strawberry harvest, and then taking a totem out to uh, do a Skull Caverns Day. Today is pretty simple. I'm just trying to get as much uh, money as possible, which includes taking drop shafts whenever I can, using explosive ammo. Um, you see I got a crystallarium there from a chest, which is nice, because gathering crystallariums is another one of my goals. I'm not really proficient yet with explosive ammo, but I was definitely trying to learn it. That's part of why I'm doing this run, remember, is that I want to learn things like animation, canceling, explosive ammo, some of the skills. Um, oh, okay, this floor was just kind of silly, but I think it shows... Uh, just how valuable fighting the monsters in the Skull Cavern can be rather than just running from them. Just think about all the iridium, all the batteries, all the essence, everything that these bats drop. Um, just really incredible reward that you can get pretty quickly. Um, getting batteries from bats was very important since I have to make my own crystallariums primarily. And uh, I don't remember if there are no storms in spring or it's just unlikely. Oh, and I also got lucky with an auto grabber. So yes, further looting of the mines continues, passing out uh, right after that auto grabber. Honestly, it's hard to beat the Skull Caverns for money. Uh, but there are other sort of passive money makers like farming, which we are also still participating in. Upping our Crystallarium stock, getting more jades to trade for staircases. And uh, primarily, today is going to be a Skull Caverns run as well, I believe. I think I'm just taking care of some farm chores before heading out. Um, especially with days where I'm not using a rock candy, I think it's worth it to still take care of the farm and not just exclusively Skull Cavern, at least if you're trying to play kind of a well-rounded, complete playthrough. Uh, but most of what I'm doing today is, uh, at least in the morning, is selling off all of the things that I've accumulated. Generally speaking, you've seen that I've kept my money total pretty low to zero. That allows me to pass out without losing money, but at a certain point, you know, once you're already dealing in, like, 25,000 gold, losing 1,000 is not backbreaking anymore. Uh, early on, I think, you know, the, the consequence could be more impactful. But yeah, just a Skull Caverns day. Nothing too remarkable about it from what I recall. I did get a red cabbage seed drop, um, which allows me to complete the community center one year. I was basically guaranteed to get that with how much Skull Cavern I would theoretically be doing, but it is kind of fun uh, to get it so early in spring. Be actually able to, to plant it on summer one. So I don't have a lot else to say about Skull Cavern, honestly. I'm not really a pro at it. You can see that I have some questionable decision making running from this serpent. But I do think that in all of the uh, gameplay I've watched from people like Blade and Haboo and Cordite, I think I've picked up a few tricks. Um, so hopefully I'm not embarrassing myself too much with these Iridium hauls I'm bringing home. Uh, several hundred at a time at least. Iridium is such a good money maker. And I leveled up to level 9 combat. I'm already past the explosive ammo requirement, but more levels aren't bad. And selling off all of my spare wares, through that purple slime egg, uh, got me, I think it was like 20,000 there. Use a rain totem, harvest from the fruit bat cave. Today is another primarily chores day, um, but also because it is a Thursday, I'll need to be visiting the desert. I need to buy speed grow from Sandy, that was one of my goals, and I need to buy a magic rock candy for three prismatic shards from the desert trader, so that I would theoretically do every Thursday. Um, it's just like the most powerful item in the game, or among them certainly. Big value here in selling my Void Essences at the Adventurer's Guild, turn in the fourth Dwarf Scroll, so now I have the translation guide. Um, if I wanted to switch over to buying bombs from him rather than use explosive ammo, I could do that. So after donating all of this to the museum, I go over to Clint, make myself 50,000, and then immediately blow it upgrading my pick uh, and buying a ton of coal from him. Coal is a resource that I was constantly struggling with, even with the Burglar's Ring and all my Dust Sprite farming, so I decided to just start buying it direct from Clint. I had a radium that I needed to spelt. Use some more of my fiber to make tea saplings, um, another, you know, classic money maker. And already preserved jars rotating over again. Like I said, this is primarily a chores day. 
playing this run did teach me a lot about the game. You know, I thought I already had pretty proficient Stardew knowledge, and I am both intimidated and scared to have to sort of relearn the game with 1.6. Um, but playing this run taught me a lot of improvements that I can make just in my casual play, and also lots of little finicky details, lots of how long it takes to get from place to place, how long it takes to cook different things, exactly how much things cost, how much of each resource you can gather in a day. Um, and there you saw me selling off my produce and then uh, buying the speed grow at Sandy. So I uh, needed to make a little more money after blowing everything on coal. So. Chopped double acorns again, replanted. This is a continual venture. You know, the number of kegs that you need is just so vast uh, that gathering all of that oak resin needs to start as early as possible, multiplying the tree farm. And then, as always, it's back out to the mines, gather some more fiber. Level 7 farming achieve. And on the 26th, I woke up early, uh, took my luck boosting food, and it's a rain day. Gathered the key to uh, key into the sewer, and then because I totemed yesterday, uh, it's going to be raining all day, which is an excellent opportunity for me to fish. I can't forget about the legend; that's still a goal that I have out ahead of me, and so I made sure to uh, utilize these last few days while my farm is running, while all of my furnaces are smelting iridium. It's also Pierre's birthday, so, you know, gave him an item. Um, but a few more things to sell off here to make some spending money. <laughs> and I used this 4K to, in fact, spend and start another another coop building. So yes, the 26th, 27th, and 28th will all have noticeable amounts of fishing in them. Um, they are all rain days. I think I... Oh, and, and there at the bottom of my inventory, you might have seen for a second, I do actually have a fish taco. I got it from the saloon trash can, and that gives plus two fishing, so I only need eight to catch the legend, uh, that all-important goal that I'm aiming towards. So you can kind of see most of my inventory there, actually, um, all the important stuff instead. More acorn doubling, but... Since today is a rainy day, I am primarily fishing catfish bubbles. I would look at the predictor map and then find where all the bubbles were throughout the day. There's my iridium pick. And then make sure that I was just mapping between each of those locations to maximize uh, my catfish catching. That was the fastest way for me to level up date. Uh, both of my tools are now iridium, gold complete, so I started to put in my watering can instead. Uh, my whole field currently is uh, automatically sprinklered, so I don't need a watering can, but if I was to get to iridium, it might be worthwhile. Oh, here's another important purchase, Krobus' Star Drop. Um, but if I did get an iridium watering can in summer one, it, I think it might be worth it to plant star fruit and water them in big patches. So I figured I may as well start the next tool. More fishing, more fishing, just bubbles at every opportunity. It maximizes catch speed to such an impressive degree. Here you see me uh, fishing up a couple treasure chests, gaining level 7 fishing overnight, level 8 fishing. That is the uh, minimum that I can catch the legend with. So now it's time to head into the 28th final day of the challenge. So obviously I wanted to sell everything I was I would not theoretically use in summer, so I can get a better idea of just how much I accomplished. Um, I do put in a new uh, strawberry jarring. I do continue to chop and double acorns, but by and large I'm going to kind of liquidate the uh, spare things that I was holding, just to see how much money I could have left this season with. Like I said, I don't expect to continue this file, or if I do, it'll be in 1.6, and maybe I'll play it more casually, or maybe I'll learn 1.6 before playing Summer. Um, but I don't expect to continue this file, so these accomplishments are primarily only meaningful... Hey, look who I got on the line. Primarily only meaningful is sort of measuring myself and um, trying to see what all is possible. Yes, you have to watch my embarrassingly bad fishing the whole time that I'm talking. <laughs> uh, but anyway... I think that once I learn 1.6, I might be interested in uh, playing Summer. I think that doing this challenge was not only fun, but also taught me about the game, and I think it will improve the enjoyment that I get from the game going forward. Check it out. Legend caught in Spring 1. Not very impressive by itself, but I also just bought the Galaxy Hammer, right? Not by itself very impressive. 
Uh, here I am giving uh, gifts to the local mountain folk. But there are so many of these goals that I accomplished in this run, so I kind of like uh, having that overlapping nature rather than just doing like a, a maximum money challenge or something, which is a very different problem to optimize, uh, maybe one that appeals to me less. Selling off some of the kale and strawberries I harvested. Then I make my way out to the desert and spend most of my money stocking up on starfruit seeds. <laughs> And then it is back out into the mines. It is time to test out the galaxy hammer and continue with fiber gathering. Uh, all important process. So let's look, look back at those goals that I originally set. By the end of spring, I wanted to have the bust of the desert unlocked, two lucky rings, explosive ammo, enough star fruit and speed grow to do a max plant on summer one. I wanted to have 200 oak trees. I wanted to have 10 crystallariums, the galaxy hammer, five coops, a barn, an iridium pick and axe. I wanted to catch the legend, and I wanted to buy Krobus' star drop. And all of those are accomplished. It's like I've been saying, I had a fantastic time with this run. I hope that you also enjoyed watching it. I know it's a little different than conventional cozy Stardew videos, um, but I've always been more of an optimizer. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to see you here next time. Thanks for watching.